is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is The Chris Abraham Show, season 20. Sorry, season 5, 5, episode 21. Bente uno... That day, uh, uh, what is what else? Um, 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 is it Swansea? Einun Swansea? Is it Einun Swansea? I don't know. Anyway. You are probably being completely distracted by the sound of diesel trucks and the sound of um, a waterfall. It's really funny. I feel like the trucks and the construction trucks are just moving closer to where I'm trying to record, but I love this little area and I just got myself a huge espresso and two bottles um, De beauté do, de beauté do. Um, is it de beauté de l'eau, or is it de beauté do? Je sais pas. Anyway, today is just a really casual one. I'm not talking about all the world's issues. I'm talking about my weight loss journey, and a bunch of other little stories based on. Uh, what it's like being a completely obese man with, I guess, premature gray, premature white hair, uh, black don't crack, but white do crack, this white crack, and um, there's another uh, garbage truck, another diesel garbage truck, this is so much fun. Hopefully they'll make the whole thing run and make a bunch of noise so we can listen to it. It's going to be an ASMR rather than a uh, podcast. So happy belated um, Eid to my Islamic Muslim brothers and sisters. I do believe that yesterday was... um, Yesterday was Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Adha, and so I live, people are wondering why I live in this neighborhood and why I uh, live in the building I live in, but when I was going to check my mail yesterday, at the uh, elevator was this, like, two beautiful Muslim families, all dressed to the nines, so cute, so adorable. Even the little girl, so adorable, had a a leopard print backpack, and one of the ladies in her hijab had like um, a matching leopard print vest, and everybody had on their shiny, sparkly, like awesome, crystally pretty strappy sandal shoes on because that's how Muslim women rock the fashion is uh, uh, toes, shoes, nails, and, uh, and, and eyebrows, I think. I think they rock eyebrows. I've never seen a Muslim woman who doesn't rock eyebrows. Anyway, they were on their way out, and I wish them a happy Eid. And they, their, light, their faces light lit up because, like, I really feel like there's a complete divide in America. And I wished everybody yesterday who I knew was Islamic or Muslim. And their faces lit up because that was a celebratory day for them. I don't know what Eid al-Adha is, so I will try to include that in the notes. But... I mean, Mark called me, and he always mocks me for living here, but I told him, I mean, what other place in the country, it's so rare, outside of maybe Berlin or Paris or Londres, 
I mean, I never even had this experience when I lived in D.C. proper. But um, every day I say, you know, um, um, you know, hola, que tal, todo bien, todo bien. I say, uh, bonjour, como allez vous or como va, como va tu, or I say, uh, how's it, howdy, how you doing, good morning, good afternoon. I say, uh, assalamu alaikum every day. And, uh, I still don't quite have down, is it wu alaikum wu salam? Is it wu alaikum wu salam when you say, and peace be upon you too? Is it wu salam wu salaikum? Assalaikum, assalaikum. Assalam. Assalamu assalam alaikum, assalamu alaikum, wu alaikum, wu salam, I think is the response. So that's pretty awesome, man. Like, what a great life, right? Like, I don't want all y'all to move into sexy South Arlington. And it's kind of like a bespoke Sioux. I would say that not everybody gets it or enjoys it or appreciates it. It can feel a little bit like, you know, kind of, it could feel like a shithole. It could feel, you know feels like the 70s here. I, I keep on saying that it's stuck in the 80s, but honestly, this neighborhood reminds me of when I used to visit um, my, I forgot the neighborhood, but my, my uh, grandma and grandpa lived in a part of northern New Jersey across a bridge from where, um, uh, where that, you know, northern New Jersey main campus of, like, whatever that university is called. Um, and, like, it felt scruffy, and there wasn't, like, it wasn't, like, strip malls. It was legit low uh, block stores, storefronts. This is all about the low block storefront, right? No big uh, parking lot in front. It really is a different age. And, uh, everybody talks about how it's going to change. You know, there's some, there's a few executive apartments built and I, I'm drinking coffee from Starbucks and I go to a giant and I've got a, a giant pharmacy, a CVS pharmacy and a Walgreens all within walking distance. Um, I've got three cafes to go to two of which I like, one of which, I'm sorry, Rappahannock, I just, like, don't like your coffee shop. Um, you know, that, uh, it's really down to earth. Anyway, back to that. So, the story starts when I am carrying around, I bought a, um, a Huckberry slick version of the GORUCK GR1 26 liter, which I'm realizing now isn't really that built. It's not overbuilt for schlepping, but I bought it anyway because I like the color. I like the coyote brown, and if I had known how skanky and dirty it gets, I would have just gotten black, but I like it. I mean, I just need to take a brush and some... Um, diluted dishwashing detergent and it'll be good. A little bit of Dawn will do you. But then I had its scars updated with a molly on the shoulder strap so I could have a chest strap, sternum strap, and then I had cinchings, two pairs of cinching straps put in and all this other stuff. And so now it's a rucking bag. And in order to, so I've been carrying around around 12 kilograms uh, without a plate. And then I'm like, you know what? I want to carry as much weight as I've lost. So I wimped out and I should have gotten the 30 pound plate, but I got the 20 pound plate. So I put a 20 pound plate in and now my bag is like 43 pounds. The last time I weighed it between 43 and 45 pounds, uh, which is around 20 kilograms. And I wear that everywhere. I wear that everywhere. It's a 20 pound plate. It's all of my tech gear. It's my super old X220 uh, Lenovo. 
another garbage truck uh, with a with a with a uh, a, a base, a uh, docking base. So it's like all the heavy in the world, and um, so I schlep it around now. It's also got a little bag with my homemade do-it-yourself uh, orange double paracord uh, cable handle, cable machine handle um, suspension trainer. Anyway, so I'm walking home, and the woman next door is apparently 83. She's pretty spry. She's very lively. There is a, I don't know, 30, 40 year old um, driver. He he works. He has his own. Um, he has his own suburban or whatever, like black car, and he does black car services. And he his family lives in the building, and his sister looks identical to him. But he's such a mensch that he goes up and checks on her almost every day. And I don't. I don't need another old lady looking after me in my life right now. Um, still suffering PTSD from my mom. So I don't really interact with her. But I got the, the, I got the data, which is I am successful. I've spent the last year... And I've told this to Mark. I've spent the last year trying to make myself as old and invisible as humanly possible. And at 350, like, you know, my buddy Keith even said it looked like I was pushing four bills at some point. And, like, nobody can believe I'm, quote, only 53. For me, I'm like, holy shit, I'm 53. For everybody else, it's like, we thought you were 60. We thought you were 65. We thought you were retired. We thought you were 70. So apparently my success has been too good. So, And my response to that is always, the more invisible I am, the better. The more nobody casts a sweet eye at me, the better. The more I'm uh, grandpa and not... Um, boyfriend. The more I'm grandpa material and not boyfriend material, the the moment I've moved past that creepy middle age where you're creepy uncle and I'm more safely an invisible granddad, the better. But uh, that happened with a guy on Uber. Like he's this uh, handsome black guy in his fifties, and I joked with him when he told me he thought I was sixty-five. I told him that's not fair. Black don't crack, and I feel like. The CPAP machine has really aged my face because, like, I'm literally wearing this thing crunching my face to keep a seal with straps on my head and my face and this, like, breathing apparatus. Just look at um, look at the recent photos of Joe Biden as they're trying to make a mountain out of the molehill known as his CPAP machine. And look at the strap marks in his face. Like, there's no denying that at least, you know, for a few hours after you stop using it, your face is like, is like, you know, that fresh, um, for women and men who sleep with their face down when they wake up from a nap and they've got completely bedsheet face. It's kind of like that. So, yeah, so I'm doing it. I am doing it. And the long and short, long and short story about this is that um, the reason why I'm carrying around this 43-pound ruck everywhere I go when I'm not biking, when I'm not sitting, when I'm not podcasting, when I'm not at the cafe, when I'm not at the library, or when I'm not meeting friends. I'm not going to schlep a 43-pound ruck when I'm just going to meet friends or going to a movie theater or whatever. Um, when I'm schlepping back and forth, metro boulot dodo, metro boulot dodo, then I, I uh, carry the rock. And the reason is, is because I want to prove it's not about, dude, you're going to kill your do- knees, dude, you're going to hurt your back. I felt fragile since I died in 2017, since I had uh, the heart failure, since I died, since I attained, let's say, 350, 400 pounds since I had edema in my in my legs, since I had AFib, since I had panic attacks. I felt so fragile. I felt 75 years old. I had an old man's disease. AFib is an old man's disease. And carrying effortlessly 
the 43, soon to be 53 pound um, rucksack everywhere I go is a renewal of vows. It's a renewal of vows to myself. It's like a self marriage. It's like a commitment to a future. It's like a commitment that I'm just not sputtering until someone smells something awful from my apartment and calls, um, you know, calls the, uh, uh, the fire, uh, brigade. So my, uh, recommitment to myself and my recommitment to my goals and my recommitment to a long, healthy life, and even my recommitment to, to a, uh, a daily practice of slow jogging is uh, based on how comfortable I feel schlepping around a pack that one would say is only the foolish venture of a much younger man. Um, so that's my pledge. My pledge is even though it sounds stupid, and it is stupid maybe, um, I'm being as careful as possible, you big diesel truck. What are you even doing on this street? This is a freaking road. Columbia, it's a pike, I guess. Big Pepsi truck as you pass during my podcast. Big diesel city bus with optimal hell, all good, health plan you can count on going by. A big F-350 pickup going by. You go, girls. You go, girls. Three snaps. Three snaps. Anyway, I guess this is the end of Pride Month. Tomorrow's the 30th. Inshallah. And uh, also, yeah, like, I don't know if I ever mentioned this. Probably not. But I really had a hard fall when I was wearing uh, big-ass uh, Hoka One One Bondi's. And I was walking, walking, walking. And I freaking went down and rolled. And went down hard. And um, it, like, bruised my entire sympathetic chain to the point where it had no sympathy. And I, you know, my ankle swel- swole, sw- swelled. And it sucked. So now that I've actually added a 20-pound cast iron plate into my bag, I don't care about my my laptop getting damaged because I have three other like it, identical, just like, two others, three others just like it. And they're about, you know, $200 on eBay still. But, um, but what bothers me is I don't want to roll my ankle and then go down and like injure myself under a plate or under a 43 pound bag. So Walgreens truck, Walgreens diesel truck, so I'm wearing no bull, um, my no bull, uh, booties, my no bull weightlifting booties, uh, that I bought used off of eBay. They're size 14. Apparently I need size 14 in no bull. Apparently if you get no bull shoes, they run a little, a little small and they're weightlifting shoes. So there's virtually their zero drop. They might be called, um, they might be called barefoot shoes if they were a little bit more flexible. But they're definitely more along the lines of if you own original Chuck Taylors or original Vans or other type of weightlifting casual shoes. And I love them very much. So I'm wearing those instead. And on the days that I am really going for long walks, I'm going to just wear like a Hill People Gear chest rig and a three liter um, bladder on my back. So I'm not going to carry a uh, 43 pound bag on my long rucks that's just stupid that that's just stupid only when i do my local my local trips you know uh from my apartment to the library to the cafe to the penrose park to uh walter reed community park and so forth that's when i'm going to carry it oh and there's an addition to my bag i might have told you that i've been carrying hey city bus I might have told you City Bus and Second City Bus, my beloved Route 16 buses and my beloved bus drivers. Oh, don't forget, if you take a City Bus or any bus, always say thank you to your bus driver. I feel like they treat buses like they're run by robots, but they're not. And bus drivers respond very well, even from the dorky white guy who says, 
Hello, sir. I hope you're doing well, and have a good day, sir. Thanks for the ride. But I'm that guy. I am that guy. I would do it to the metro riders, or the metro drivers, if I could, but that's not really a thing. Um, always be generous. Always be grateful. Always wave at people letting you through. Always be very generous with people who are driving. They could kill you. Always be nice to drivers because they have a death vehicle, a death... De Always be nice to drivers because they're driving a death mobile that could kill you without even doing any damage to their vehicle, their car, their truck, their bus, their truck, their car, their bus. Oh my. All right. So I was carrying around a TRX strap and a set of um, jump rope that don't have any rope on them, just uh, rubber balls at the end. And I realized that I'm not quite up to um, up to um, fake jump rope yet. So I downgraded the little pouch I carry things on to the GR1 uh, pouch that Ruck, Go Ruck makes. It's a sexy little coyote brown one to match my sexy Huckberry bag, you garbage truck going by. And uh, I decided to come up with my own suspension strap workout tool. So I went on to Amazon Prime and I bought... A, I bought high strength orange paracord. So instead of like 300 pounds, this is, or 500 pounds or 400 pounds, this is 700 pound um, bright orange uh, California, um, California, you know, the, the California Streetworks orange, you know the color, the safety orange uh, for, for you hunters out there. Um, and then I, asked and my buddy my business partner buddy and one of my closest friends uh uh dan kruger told me okay well maybe you know make it 30 feet so i decided well what am i going to do like at the ends like so i started to look for maybe just um titanium or aluminum pipe and then i came upon um aluminum uh aluminum grips for at the end of, you know, cable machines. So, so there they are two grips at the each end of a cable machine. This one on, uh, on Amazon is so good. I really love them. They are, the brand is, la, 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 la. The brand is, um, Bryant Fitness. So I bought the ones with the gray straps and the silver handles, and they've got these D-rings. And then what I did is I got the uh, orange paracord. And since I'm six foot three or six foot four, I measured the paracord by um, uh, extending my arms three times, which is, I guess, um, 6, 12, 18 feet. And then I did it again. So... Uh, um, so, because I wanted to double it up, right? So, that's what I did. I, um, I guess, right, 36 feet total. Thirty-six feet total divided in half is, um, is, is 18 feet, and so what I did is I looked online to get a, a good, like, way of meeting the two pieces at the very end. So I found a fisherman's knot, which I made perfectly the first time, thank you, YouTube and Google Images. And then what, uh, before I made that knot, of course, I put the two D-rings on there. And then, um, so it's doubled over, and then I made sure I found the middle, and then I made, then I, every foot or so, maybe every two feet, every half meter, um, actually every, every foot or 15, 12 to 15 inches, I put 
a knot in uh, both. So so the uh, so I loop the two handles into the giant thirty six foot loop. So it's doubled, so it's only eighteen feet. And then I made sure that I tied every twelve to fifteen inches. I made a simple knot so that the entire thing wouldn't be moving around or sliding around. So essentially it is um, those two cable handles uh, met by uh, 18 or so feet of orange para cable, paracord, that's doubled over. And so it should have, technically speaking, enough tests, is that the word? Enough uh, brake strength that my simple and stupid TRX exercises will be fine. The one thing that I didn't implement that I bought was a bunch of shrink wrap tubing, you know, like shrink wrap rubber tubing that they put on things like um, paracord poles that are on backpacks and stuff. But I'm not going to, I could cut the, cut, I could cut the, I could cut the paracord and then put, you know, back in two fisherman, fisherman's knots and everything would be fine. But I'm just going to leave it the way it is so I can get a real-world test as to when I throw it over tree limbs, how long before the paracord frays and breaks. And then, you know, paracord's cheap. I'm not using... And then I can decide whether I want to go with Kevlar cord or if I want to go... I don't want to go with, with, with rope. This is fine. It's very light. And then the next time before I, you know make all the knots and everything else the next time I make one or if I make a second one I will put loads of I will put loads of shrink rubber tubing onto the abrasion points but I won't know what the abrasion points are until I use it without the tubing for now so it goes everywhere I I go it's just really light I feel like the bag, the overbuilt bag is, is way heavier than the, and the handles are kind of heavy, even though, though they're aluminum, aluminum, but, um, making, they're perfect. And you know what they do? They, they spin beautifully, you know, when you're doing things like, like flies and, uh, fall overs and, um, reverse flies and, and, um, um, Things like that. It's nice to have a real kind of smooth transition as opposed to one that might be extremely gritty or whatever. So the lightness that I suffer by not having like titanium or PVC handles directly connected to um, paracord by doing some sort of you know, not a uh, triangle knot or something like that, I think is worthwhile just for the fit and finish of this. And the knurled aluminum, aluminum handles, they feel good in the hand. So that is worth it. I also bought a bunch of, of carabiners, but I'm using a really cheap Petzl, what's called a Caratool L called a large caratool which is made out of basically blown plastic it's only looks like a carabiner i'm gonna it it says that it doesn't have any uh value as a real carabiner at all so we'll see if my if my weight using it as like i said presses pulls bicep tricep fallovers flies t flies y flies um, assisted squats, biceps, trites, all those things, those are really easy, weight assisted, tilty, they're not, this is not replacing some sort of hanging from the ceiling, um, a gymnast, uh, just gymnast, uh, um, um, what are they called, they're called, not loops, gymnast, here, this is the way it sounds. 
they're not TRXs to be to be hung from, and they're not um, circles. Oh damn it! What are they called? Oh, I wish I could visualize it. It would it would jog my memory. Gymnasts, hoops, circles. I don't know. You can tell me in the comments or send me a dummy message. So that's me. Every day after I finish working at the libraries, I schlep over to Walter Reed Park at between 6 to 8 p.m., depending on how much work I have at the library and when the library closes. If the library closes at 5, I will go over to Columbia. I'll go over to... Uh, come on, dear. Uh, uh, I'll go over to Walter Reed Community Park at, you know, 5.15, 5.30, or 5 o'clock, because I'll leave early so as to not stress out the librarians. I also say thank you and hello and goodbye to them all the time, too. So be nice to the people around you, right? They deserve love, and you need to compensate for every Karen or every, every, every what is it, Carl? What's the male form of a Karen? Men and women who are Karens are Karens. So since we live in a gender-fluid world, you every day need to compensate for the fact that someone suffered a Karen and they need that, they need that life-affirming love that you have to give to them. Look them in the eye. Always meet their eye. Unless you have... Unless you're on the spectrum or are a complete introvert and that is like the worst thing in the world to you, but if you meet someone in the eye and hold it for a second and show with your face that they're not just words, um, that will make up. That will improve their day as much as a Karen destroys their day. And I guarantee you, while you might not be part of their cocktail part, cocktail day pratter about complaining about the person they met that day, you will build them up. And I think we need to build each other up. And telling me I look 70 is exactly what I wanted you to do, but it still hurts. <laughs> um, my, uh, my big brother, I don't know if you guys know the fraternity system, but I, I, I joined a, fratern a chartered fraternity in GW called Phi Kappa Psi. And uh, my big brother, the person whose job it was to mentor me, uh, we called Lubby, Lubkin, and loved the guy. He's such a, like, um, he's, he's awesome, but, like, he's the kind of guy who, like, ribs you, right? Like, he's that, he's so much love, though, like, I realized that all that ribbing was really just out of so much love, and the moment he realizes that he hurts you, he gives you, like, a big virtual hug or a big real hug, or loves on you. So, Lubby's always been like that, but I would never ever try to show weakness. Like, he helped teach me the Greek alphabet, he helped teach me the history of Phi Kappa Psi, he helped, you know, get me through the whole thing. And so we're still friends on on Facebook, and um, he's a made man now, so all he does is travel around and visit friends and visit cities, and goes to the best Jewish delis in the world. Uh, love the guy. Um, we've gotten closer because of Facebook, I really think. Like, there was 20 years just after college where I just didn't do a very good job at all of keeping up. Anyway, my fraternity pledge name was Zeus, right? So, first of all, that is the best pledge name ever. It's a Greek god. It's, it's the god of Greek gods. It's like the daddy of Greek gods. It's like the god of gods. And they made a story up about how um, how, uh, how they were going to call me Lord because of Jack Lord, because of growing up in Hawaii, but they thought calling me Lord was going to go to my head. So they call me Zeus instead. And every time he sees me looking 75 years old, he's like, we might need to revoke your name. You're not looking very Zeus. You're not looking very Zeus. So... I should have become a doctor. I should have gotten a PhD and become Dr. Zeus. Anyway, so hopefully in the next year I'll become beautiful enough to be, uh, to be, to be Zeus again. Um, 
So anyway, that's that's my stories for today. Sorry I didn't carry water for Putin today. Sorry I didn't do any heterodox things. I'm sorry I didn't blame Ukraine for being in a war. Sorry about all these things, but I love you anyway. And if you're here for that kind of con- conversation, I'm hoping that the incredibly loud sound of all that water at Penrose Square Park, the... Um, it's a kind of a playground, like it's a, it's a, I guess shale or or it's anyway it's flat stone, shale stone, flat stone, and the water comes up from the ground from the from the from the stone tiling, and at a certain point of the day, it becomes kid kid world, right? A thousand little kids in um, in their uh, swimwear come out here with moms. But they're not here yet because they might be hiding inside because it says that the weather quality is terrible. And I can't see very far, so it looks like a foggy day. But this is Canadian wildfire brand uh, fog in Arlington right now. If you go to, I don't know, if you go to someplace. If you go to my Reddit profile, I think you might see, I don't know. I don't know where I posted a photo from my apartment. You can go find it. Um, so yeah, so maybe if all you want is really kind of my heterodox stuff about opt-in eugenics movements or, or, uh, the, um, are we the baddies concept of Western imperialism, very literally stro, uh, slow, um, a uh, slow rolling or saying that Germany actually won World War III because they fooled everybody into the EU All these things. If you want to hear that kind of heterodox heterodox, heterodox content, then uh, just hold on. I'm sure another one will come out. Like, I made an awful comment saying there there was news. Okay, I'll give you one. There was news yesterday about how um, either a rocket, a bomb, a missile, or um, a terrorist act blew up a pizza restaurant in a town in Ukraine killing like a million moms and kids and babies. And I think that there's like 16 dead and 39, 12 dead and 39 or 40 injured. And my asshole, what an asshole would say answer was why the, like people stayed inside for COVID for two fucking years. And you're in the middle of a hot war and you can't fucking stay home and not go to a crowded pizza restaurant, for fuck's sake. And then I realized that that's only what an asshole would say, so I put the whole thing into quotes. More likely, it's bullshit and just the result of a propaganda machine, because it doesn't make any sense. And I love you, and I'll talk to you soon. And please don't hate me too much, because I don't know at all what I'm talking about. I am like the lowest, lowest, lowest layman in the lowest, lamest layman world. I got a Fantasia and SDAM. I don't have a master's degree. I started in a political science degree, but got an American literature degree. And, um, and all my friends think I'm that crazy uncle, even though I don't drink anymore. So I'm not drunk uncle. Uh, so thank God for that. Love you guys. Come back soon. Talk to you later. Ciao. for listening to the chris abraham show make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes until next time